I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while, but I keep putting it off because it's a subject that sickens me to my core. It makes me feel physically ill when I think about this. I just can't focus on this for too long. I have never watched any of these sorts of videos, but I've seen the thumbnails on YouTube. These videos are very popular, getting hundreds of thousands, even millions of views. I haven't watched any of these videos because I think they would be too difficult to watch. I've heard from viewers who told me that they have watched these videos, they have read the comments, so I kind of know a little bit about these videos. So there are a lot of videos on YouTube of people, Asian people usually, eating live seafood. And a lot of these videos are ASMR videos. Apparently, a lot of people enjoy the sounds of people eating uh, live animals. And I just want to call out the hypocrisy here. People get really upset about Asians eating dogs. And uh, there are all sorts of protests and people calling out this practice as cruel and inhumane. Uh, I believe the dogs are killed in horrible ways. You know, they're not uh, spared of pain and torture. But these very same people, it seems, have no issue whatsoever with these Asian people eating live f seafood. I mean, they're not even killing the food first. They're eating it alive. Uh, maybe they are under the impression that seafood uh, and doesn't suffer that octopuses don't feel pain. They do feel pain. Can someone explain to me why so many people seem to hate PETA? From what I can see, PETA is very rational. They present facts and information. I don't really see what is so controversial about them. I understand they do put some naked women in ads and stuff like that, like the nudity. Is that all it is? Is that why people are so offended? I mean, there's nudity everywhere in society now. W what is it with PETA? PETA shares factual information and expert opinions. And I think people hate PETA for the same reason they hate me. These dog and cat worshippers cannot handle the truth. PETA published this article that states octopuses can feel pain, just like all animals. Of eating an octopus alive, Dr. Jennifer Mather, an expert on cephalopods and a psychology professor at the University of Lethbridge in Alberta, Canada, says the following. The octopus, which you've been chopping to pieces, is feeling pain every time you do it. Let's look at this article together. It states that slaughtering animals for food is bad enough, but eating them while they are still alive, it's the stuff of nightmares. In this disturbing video, which I'm not going to show you, by the way, I can't watch it. I haven't seen it. I don't want to see it. In this disturbing video, a live octopus is pinned on a grill and stabbed repeatedly by diners who appear to carry on a conversation and even laugh as the animal struggles for his or her life. The diners hold down the animal's tentacles, that are actually called arms, um, on the hot surface, and one person digs his hand into the octopus's head, tearing it open. Eating live octopus is not uncommon in parts of the world. In South Korea, there are entire restaurants that center around eating the animal live. In this video, diners laugh as a small octopus tries to get away. Won't be watching that. You can check it out for yourself. I'll put the link in the description. In other videos like this, the animal is repeatedly dropped and slammed to the ground, causing even more suffering before he or she is ultimately eaten. Octopuses are playful, resourceful, and inquisitive. Some species cuddle with each other, while others have been known to bond with humans. They use tools, are masterful escape artists, and can pass personality traits on to their offspring. They have personalities. I think it's because octopuses look so different from us. You know, dogs and cats have human-like characteristics. I've read that people have a, 
subconscious desire to nurture them because of their forward-facing eyes, their large eyes, which resemble babies' eyes. You know, octopuses' eyes are so different. They are so alien. They, they're they so not human-like. They're not furry. That you know, And I think it is because they look so different from us that people don't extend their compassion to them. They think that octopuses are some sort of plant or something they're not they have a nervous system they are extremely sensitive so i i can't even do this video without crying i've already tried making three takes and i keep crying like what is wrong with you people how do you not care oh i i ask myself why do i care so much why do people think I'm crazy for crying right now? Um, it's because I care about nature. Why do I care about nature so much? I've always had this fascination with nature. I've looked at creatures like the octopus and other, and fish, salamanders, you know, all creatures. People accuse me of being a bird lover. I, I respect all wild animals, okay? They have a consciousness. They don't exist for us. They're not here to entertain us or to satisfy our taste buds. They exist for their own reasons. They have a consciousness. They have their own business that they go about. They have an experience of the world, which is so different from ours. Animals have abilities that we don't have. They can do things we can't do. They have senses that we lack. You know, the ability to see in ultraviolet or different. They have these abilities, these, you know, they migrate. How do they know where they're going? How do baby hummingbirds know to get to Mexico on their own when they are born in northern BC, Canada, you know? But they know it. They know where to go. It's a mystery. It is a wondrous, miraculous, fascinating thing to see. You know, nature, these animals that have been evolving through a process of natural selection over the course of millions of years to do all these incredible things they are doing, to occupy ecological niches and to play important roles in the ecosystem to keep everything in balance. When you look at an ecosystem, it functions like an organism with different parts that work together to sustain it. It's, it's amazing. Do people not think about this? I don't think people think about this like I do. I don't think that they can appreciate it like I do because they just don't give it any thought. There's this interdependency in nature between animals that I just find magical. Dogs and cats disrupt ecosystems because they are not native to any ecosystem. We introduce them into ecosystems and they throw everything out of balance and they're driving hundreds of species to extinction. Wild animals are natural. They belong in nature. Unlike dogs and cats that were created by human beings, you know, through selective breeding. They did not evolve naturally. I look at the octopus and I see a creature that is so mysterious and so sensitive. Now, maybe this is because I just have more knowledge of them. So I'm going to share a few octopus facts with you. Octopuses are widely considered to be the most intelligent of all invertebrates. Scientists say octopuses are capable of learning from experience and maintaining short and long-term memory. They've also been observed using tools in an intelligent manner, such as coconuts for personal fortresses. Their camouflage abilities are out of this world. For ocean predators, octopuses are some of the most difficult prey to spot their skin changes color and pattern to blend in with their surroundings. Even when you find yourself looking directly at an octopus, chances are you won't realize it. Partly because they can see with their skin. 
scientists recently found that octopus skin contains the same light-sensitive proteins present in octopus eyes, meaning an octopus's skin can sense and respond to light without information from the eyes or brain. I have seen videos of、uh, cuttlefish, and I believe it's the same with octopuses. Um, scientists put them in a tank with like a checkered bottom, and when the cuttlefish, or was it an octopus? I don't remember. They're very closely related, but their skin would actually、um, change color and and change into a checkered pattern, like a black and white checkered pattern. And I wondered how can they do this? Rather than swimming, octopuses often walk along the sea floor, which is hilarious but mostly useful. When an octopus swims, the heart that pumps blood to its organs stops beating, so crawling is a more efficient, less exhausting alternative. Once a female octopus lays her eggs, she stops eating. She'll stay and watch over her eggs until they hatch, slowly starving to death. Check out the documentary on Netflix called "My Octopus Teacher." It's about a diver who forms a relationship with a wild octopus, and、uh, it, it, it's just so moving. And he compares the octopus's affection and curiosity and intelligence to that of, you know, a mammal, like like a cat. These these invertebrates should not be this intelligent, but they are.、Um, it's it's amazing. They are amazing. Squid are amazing. Fish are amazing. All forms of sea life are amazing. I'm not going to make videos about all these animals because these videos already exist.、Uh, it's up to you to go and learn about these amazing creatures. There is as much evidence that fish feel pain and suffer as there is for birds and mammals. Scientists have proved beyond a doubt that fish, lobsters, crabs, and other sea dwellers. Feel pain. Yeah, these articles are coming from PETA. They're just sharing the science. Why do people hate PETA? Because they hate the message. Don't shoot the messenger. In terms of appearance and behaviors, sea creatures are very different from humans. But they do suffer. They do feel pain. So it makes no sense to not extend our compassion to them. It makes no sense. That the people who are upset about dogs and cats being tortured and killed are not upset about sea creatures being tortured and killed. Like I said, I haven't watched any of these videos of people eating these animals alive, but I've heard from、uh, people, friends, viewers who have, and they've told me that in the comments section, people are defending those who torture and eat these animals. Alive, by saying it's part of their culture, as if that excuses any behavior. Like we can't criticize them because it's their culture. I have two things to say about this. Number one, it's also their culture to kill dogs for food, right? But they can criticize that, no problem. Number two, cultural pride is ridiculous. It is. What breeds an us versus them attitude? It leads to wars. There are a lot of cultures that do a lot of shitty things. Just saying it's part of their culture doesn't make it okay. There are many things about North American culture, Canadian culture that are stupid, and ridiculous, and cruel, and I think should be abolished. And I'm Canadian. You know, I, I don't get offended if you criticize my culture. I criticize my culture, and so should everyone. This is how we grow and evolve and become better as human beings by criticizing ourselves and accepting criticism from others who can see that our behaviors are barbaric. This is barbaric what we are doing to sea creatures. It isn't any less barbaric than what people are doing to dogs and cats when they imagine eating a dog alive. Could you imagine? How all these dog worshippers would react to that? What these Asian people are doing to sea creatures is actually worse than what they are doing to dogs. I don't know what more I can say about this. I think I've said it all. So thanks for watching.
Take care. The future is dog free.